This is lesson 12 for 7th grade, and today we were talking about elapsed time and comparing problems, uh, just to kind of tie in with the other types of problems or word problems that we've been dealing with. Uh, once again, these are pretty similar, and um, what's, what we're going to find today is that when we deal with comparing and elapsed time, a lot of times what we're talking about is uh, the method of subtraction. Um, so uh, we'll jump into some of this. All right, so uh, problems about comparing often ask questions that contain words like how much greater or how much less. Uh, the number that describes how much greater or how much less is called the difference. We find the difference by subtracting the lesser number from the greater number. So this is our type of formula when we're talking about comparing. We have a greater number minus the lesser number that gives us the difference. Now the difference always goes with subtraction and we've learned that from a while back. Okay, this is something new that I've been trying and I know a lot of other faculty members have been using these. Um, when I put examples up here now, the students actually can give me live feedback with a clicker. Um, they, they can actually read this example, do the work, and then type in their answer to me and then at the end it'll show me um, who answered what, not it won't give me names, but it'll give me uh, how many students answered a certain way, that type of thing. So I can get live feedback, and that way I can tell if we're getting what we're talking about or if uh, we need to take some extra time on it. So when you see things like, I'm not sure if you can see it or if it's cut off, it says no devices, uh, no one's hooked up yet or at this time. But when I do have a class, um, let's say first hour, um, all the names are popped up here. So when they click in, their name disappears, and that's how they know that they've answered. So just something new that we're trying, and um, so far it's been going well. It's the first day I've tried it today, um, and it seemed to go pretty good. So let's uh, look at this example quick. Uh, during the day, 1,532 employees work at a certain section of IBM. At night, 895 employees work there. How many more employees are there during the day than at night? Okay, so there's that that key phrase there, how many more, okay? So if we're looking for how many more, we're gonna be subtracting. We're gonna go, there are 1,532 employees at the day, and then at night, 895. If we do this subtraction, we should see how many more people work during the day than at night. So we go here, 15, and squeeze, 12, 12 minus 5 is 7, 12 minus 9 is 3, 14 minus 8 is 6. So 637 more people during the day, yeah, during the day than at night. That's how we would set that one up. So that my students would have uh, typed in 637 and sent it, and I would have started. Eventually, after a certain amount of time has passed, I start a little timer. Not sure if that's visible either, um, but that's over in the corner. It counts down from 20 seconds, and then they know they've got 20 seconds to answer. All right. Um, a, a similar problem, but with uh, a lot less words. Uh, the number 5,000 is how much less than 500,200. Okay? How much less than is 5,000 than this number? So we're going to take away 5,000 from here. So that's 500,200 minus 5,000. The marker is getting a little dry. Oops. So uh, 0 minus 0, 0. 0 minus 0. 2 minus 0 is 2. 0 minus 5, we can't do that. So we're going to borrow from 50 here. Take one away. 10 minus 5, we get 5. 49 minus 0, 49. So, 495,200 more than 5,000. All right? I should also mention, too, that, and on these lessons, I don't, or the ones that I record anyway, we don't go through the power-ups or anything like that, or any of the group stuff that we do. Um, 
but they also click in their feedback to the power-ups. And just so everyone knows, uh, you do get a participation grade for those. Um, and it, it lets me know who does that and who does not. Okay. All right, elapsed time. Elapsed time is the length of time between two points in time. And here we use points on a array to illustrate what elapsed time is. Okay, here's an earlier date, here's a later date, maybe 2011 right here, uh, 1995. If we subtract these two dates, we should get the amount of time that passed between those two. So, just like this. Take your later minus your earlier, later minus earlier, you get the difference or the amount of time that passed. So, let's use that here. How many years were there between 1465 and 1716? Well, 1716 is our later date. Here's our earlier date, 1465. Subtract those, 6 minus 5 is 1. 1 minus 6, we have to borrow from 7 here. 11 minus 6 is 5. 6 minus 4 is 2. So, 251 years. I believe we have one more elapsed time problem to go through. Okay. This one deals with uh, Dr. King. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was 34 when he gave his famous I Have a Dream speech in 1963. Uh, I got a little typo here that should have been too close. Um, in what year was he born? Okay, so 1963, he was 34. That means 34 years prior to this year, we should get when he was born. So 1963 minus his age, and we'll go here. 13 minus 4 is 9, 5 minus 3 is 2, 19. 1929, that's when he was born. So, if we wanted to figure out how old he would have been if he was still alive, we would take 2011 minus our 1929. This is kind of a side problem. This is uh, uh, just to see how old he would be. All right, uh, let's see. Well, can't do that, can't do that. I've got to borrow here. 11, 10, 11, 11 minus 9. So, had he still been alive, he would have been 82 years old today. Um, that's all we went through as far as elapsed time and some comparison problems. We did a lot of practice in class um, and with our power up and everything. Um, but I did already put the homework out on the homework link. Uh, so that's out there. And uh, we will probably continue with lesson 13 tomorrow uh, as long as everything went okay with this lesson. Alright, thanks.